Great. So today's talk is about you and fashion. It is about the construct of fashion, the adoption of technology in fashion. It is about past, present, future, and why you are going to change fashion as we know it. Now, without further ado, I'm going to jump straight in with a couple of questions. But these two questions are necessary for you to understand the construct of fashion and the flow of the talk. Now, the first question is, why do we wear garments? We all wear garments. We all wear clothes and accessories, jackets, dresses, shoes, handbags. But why do we wear them? Most of you here would say, well, we wear them to keep warm, to keep protected, to cover the more obvious part, <laughs> to uh, carry around objects, a laptop, a lipstick, some car keys. And you'd be absolutely right, as the garments that we wear allow us to function. Stay warm, protected, carry around objects, and even perform certain tasks in certain situations. Building up on that question, the second question is, why do we wear what we wear? Why do you wear that particular jacket, that particular dress, the shoes that you wear today? Think about it for a second. You might say, well, because I like them. And you do. But you also like the pyjamas, the gym outfits that you have at home. You like the color, the material. So why didn't you arrive here dressed in your pyjamas today? It is because we are what we wear. The jacket, the dress, the shoes that you wear, it allows you to showcase who you think you are and how you want to be perceived by others. I'll repeat that because it's very important. The garments that you wear allows you to showcase who you think you are and how you want to be perceived by others. Now, this is a fairly complicated concept to understand and to help you see this better, we'll do something funny today. Imagine that you are going to see your partner's parents for the first time. You've never seen them before. You feel a bit anxious. They also feel anxious. They've never met you. They know a lot of good things about you, or they've heard a lot of good things about you. So that day has come for you to meet them. So for this occasion, you decide to choose a special outfit. And you go for a green outfit, a pair of shoes, a matching pair of socks. Picture that, a green outfit, a nice pair of shoes, some nice socks, something like this. <laughs> and you arrive dressed like this to your partner's parents' house. And as a good person that you are, you see the neighbors, you wave at them, dress like that. You say hello, you even shake their hands over the fence, hello. And then you walk in, in the house like Conor McGregor in the octagon. <laughs> so out of curiosity, I'll be honest, how many of you would ever do that? How many of you here would ever walk like that into your partner's parents' house. The reason you would not do that is because the garments that you wear portrays who you think you are and how you want to be perceived by others. You see, fashion is a highly complex language, yet a language we all understand. A language built in part on the brand's heritage on the brand's craftsmanship, on this idea of quality, heritage made in Italy, craftsmanship. Imagine those artisans working in their labs, exclusive and expensive materials. It is a universal language we all understand all over the world, almost all over the world, as I think that if you come across a tribe of cannibals in the Amazonian jungle, <laughs> they'll eat you with or without your business suit. But fundamentally, the garments that we wear reflect who we think we are and how we want to be perceived by others. 
These are meanings you extract from the garments that you wear and project on the outside for others to interpret who you think you are. However, to exist, fashion needs both the symbolic and the functional values. The more we reduce the symbolic meanings of our garments, the closer to industrial apparel they get. And the more we reduce the functional value of our garments, the closer to art they get. And again, to help you understand this concept better, imagine that you're looking at a pair of beautiful shoes, a pair of shoes made of gold, encrusted with diamonds and precious stones. And you want to try them on, and you put your feet in, and you try to walk, but you can't take a single step. You can't move. The shoes are so heavy, they've lost the functional value. That's why in fashion, you need both functional value and symbolic meanings as constructed along the history of fashion. Throughout history, the world of fashion has constantly changed, transformed, and evolved by adopting new materials and new manufacturing methods. In fact, the evolution of fashion and its ability to create new styles, new forms, and new design depends on constant technological adoption. It was and it is a symbiotic relationship that continues to bestow fashion with new functional values and new symbolic meanings. In more recent years, the advent of wearable technology in particular gave hope for a radical shift what fashion could be and what fashion could do. Microchipsets, flexible electronics, smart sensors, set alight the imagination of tech heads and emerging designers. In what became known as the fashion tech landscape. But sadly, this fashion tech landscape, seeing the creations first and foremost as pure functional devices with little, if any, symbolic meanings, creations perhaps more suitable for concerts and industrial use, as you'll see from the video that follows. robotic spider dress. It's based on the Intel Edison. The dress is an interactive dress, so as soon as you step into the, the personal space of the design, the dress is starting to react to you. Dreampot dress is a fashion tech creation that literally allows its wearer to decide who to serve a shot to and who to leave dry. It's equipped with a backpack that nests all of the tubing and wiring inside, and a small pouch that holds the mixed drink liquid. A heart-shaped centerpiece at the front of the dress holds a shot glass in place while the drink is poured. Amy looks like she's just wearing a regular old fanny pack that your older aunt might wear at Disneyland. But it's not just a regular fanny pack. Look at this. It's toast. Sure, you can keep almonds in your purse as a snack, or you can make piping hot toast on your hip. You tell me what's better. <laughs> and Amy's headband, you see this headband? It's not a headband, it's butter. Mmm, <laughs> yummy. That's great. Fashion tech, ladies and gents. Fashion tech. It happened and it still happens, believe it or not. And I know I'm going to upset a lot of fashion tech designers, but where is the symbolic value of this garment? 
Some of them are funny, some of them are embarrassing, and even worse, damaging. Damaging by derailing the media's attention, by derailing the manufacturer's attention, by derailing your attention from what true innovation is and what true innovation can do for fashion. Derailing attention from innovation that already exists, innovation that can be used to bestow the garments that we wear with new functional values and new symbolic meanings. New symbolic meanings that resonate with a fast-growing segment of tech-savvy, conscious consumers strongly influenced in their consumption by the early exposure to technology and the internet. A generation brought up with Apple's status symbol of thinking different, of being intelligent, computer-savvy misfits. A generation inspired by Tesla's new symbolic meanings <laughs> of being smart, being eco-friendly. I didn't mean this one, I meant this one. <laughs> it is a generation that in contrary to what their parents think, does not use the internet and their smartphones to waste time on Snapchat, play Candy Crush Saga and Pokemon, but to become aware of the damage the fashion industry is causing on a global scale. It is a generation who knows that the new symbolic meanings they are searching for are not to be found in dresses with LED lights, are not to be found in dresses with spider legs and backpack drinks or portable toasters, but in the biorefineries that finally decouple us from the use of cotton and plastics in fashion. In using biodegradable textiles and lab-made leather instead of animal skins and earth-destroying chemicals. Symbolic meanings they can find in 3D printing with living cells and organic matter, in single manufacturing operations to reduce waste, pollution and CO2 emissions. A generation of conscious consumers of fashion that understands and embraces the idea of sustainable fashion. However, not through the growth and reduced consumption, but through remarkable scientific breakthrough at the intersection of additive manufacturing with synthetic biology and at the intersection of artificial intelligence with design. A generation that also wants to enjoy this planet and everything good that it has to offer. I guess that my message to all of you here today is that I should have arrived dressed in a green mankini. <laughs> no, no, far from that. My message to you all, fashion designers, key players, and decision makers, is that a smarter, more conscious, a more caring generation of fashion lovers is already here, waiting. Waiting for your innovative, sustainable, inspiring creations. Creations that can make this world a better place. And if after today, one of you here will initiate that next positive change, I know that my speech was not in vain. Thank you.